Hey, Rashawn. Um, hope you're well. M Mike mentioned, uh, I guess, the off-season you know, performers of the, of the year. Mentioned you along with Logan Woodside, Rashard Davis. What's uh, what's that mean? And I guess that is that a sign that maybe you did, went above and beyond during the off-season, or what, what did you take that to mean when he told you you were one of those guys? Oh no, I, you know, I, I definitely was honored to get the uh, award, and you know, just for me for off season, just making making sure I do my job and just doing all the things that I'm supposed to do. Um, you know, whether that be just helping some of these younger guys be able to, um, you know, get adjusted with the NFL lifestyle, or you know, just being able to, you know, stay on top of my work. And other than that, I feel like that's kind of what uh, what the award was for. Uh, Terry? <laughs> Rashawn, uh, Mike just got through saying that you're a guy that they like to give a lot to, that you don't mind having extra stuff on your plate. What all are they – are you hoping that they'll add to your plate this year in terms of uh, running things and doing the scheme? Shoot, hopefully, shoot. They want me on offense, I'll do that too. I mean, it's whatever, wherever it is on the field, man, to be honest with you, but – you know, I'm just a team guy, man. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm all about the team, whatever it is it, it takes for us to, you know, be great. Um, I'm all for it. Uh, Teron? Well, Sean, as far as this defense is concerned, what is it you feel you guys can do to get to that championship level that you want to get to? Mm. Uh, I would just say the number one thing is keep the chemistry, man. Um, you know, because one thing I have learned about you know, the NFL and, you know, almost three years of, of playing in the league is, you know, things don't go as good as you think they're going to go. And when they do go left, you know, having those guys in the locker room that are mature and understand that, you know, everybody holds themselves accountable for their own mistakes or the things that they do. And to know that each individual person has to be at the peak of the game for everybody else on the team to be be great. You know, I think that's the number one thing, man. Um, you know, you can talk about aces and no's. You can talk about, you know, uh, matchups and all of this other stuff. But at the end of the day, you know, it always, always comes down to uh, guys holding each other accountable and, you know, just making sure that we, we don't point any fingers. And, you know, we keep keep make this game, you know, make it make sure it's, it's fun, that, it's, that it doesn't become something that, you know, is, it, you know, looked down upon because, you you know, once you stop thinking about something that's not fun, then, you know, it, it, it starts to, you know, bring other things that don't need to be in play. Good point. Thank you. John Glenn. Hey, Rashawn. Uh, question for you. You guys, uh, you know, parted ways with a couple guys who had a, a decent amount of sacks last year in Jarrell and, and Logan Ryan. Um, wondering where you can uh, add uh, those kind of numbers this year. Who Who can – Maybe step up and deliver some more. And and for you personally, do you hope to be more involved in the in the pass rush this year? Yeah, I mean, I feel like we got a great group of guys, man, that can do it, man. Um, you know, just the guys, you know, that that I hear now, man. You, you're talking about guys that work each and every day to be elite and great. You know, some of them just walk past me, but uh, to be elite and great, man, and um, you know. Just with that being said, man, I feel like it, it takes something like that. It takes a whole defense to be able to make that happen. You know, you got your other end has to be, um, you know, flying off the ball just as just as fast as you to be able to get those tackles to respect you guys. And your interior D linemen have to be just as physical and disruptive as, you know, any any other players in the league in order for that front seven to be, you know, elite too. So, um, and then just including myself, man, whether I'm coming on blitzes, whether I'm lining up on, uh, you know, just on any other situations on third down, um, you know, just to trying to apply as much disruption as possible. Uh, you know, I feel like that's the main thing that'll help us out too. Um, you know, being an elite defense and getting off on third downs. Yeah, maybe it, just quick follow. Uh, you know, a lot of people are intrigued by uh, DeAndre Walker. Never got a chance to really see much of him last year. Obviously, have you uh, you know been able to get much of an impression on on what? Titans fans might uh, or, or should expect from DeAndre? I mean, I feel like whatever it is that DeAndre Walker will show, I feel like it, that'll come when he plays, man. Um, just from my own experience from him, I mean, he, he, he's a young guy. He's able to, you know, he goes out here and does his job. He goes out there and gets his body as healthy as possible um, for him to be able to do some of the things that they're, they're you know, slowly trying to make him do now. 
Um, but other than that, man, I feel like the future is bright. I mean, the guy's young. I mean, he got a lot of years to play in the league. And, you know, with that being said, you got to be patient with guys like that. I mean, even for myself, even coming in as a rookie, I was hurt. Um, you know, for him, I know I've told him maybe a couple of times just to be patient with yourself. Don't try to rush anything and whatever it may be that is hindering you from being able to be elite. Um, just take your time and do all the little things that you need to do in order for you to be 100 percent so that you can perform at your peak level. Uh, Kayla. Hey, Rashawn, hope you're doing well. Um, I think everybody has seen this over the past couple of years and probably your first season with the Titans, but you've just got this ability to um, lead. And so I wanted you just describe what kind of leader you would call yourself. And at what age did you feel like it was just something that you did naturally? Because that's what it appears to us as. I would say to be, I mean, just... I wouldn't even put a name on what type of leader I am because, I mean, there's so many different variations that come into leadership. I mean, it could be somebody that just leads by example. It could be somebody that's more vocal. It could be somebody that just, you know, tries to be as inspirational as possible when it comes to guys that have any other issues that don't involve X's and O's. So, I mean, it's it's a lot of things and a lot of variations that go into leadership. Me, myself, I feel like, you know, it's just more me just doing my job in itself and, you know, trying to be as – you know, as inspirational as possible with the, how the, with the things that I do on the field. I mean, just little things, whether it's running to the ball or, you know, making sure that, you know, I'm making the right calls and doing those things. So whenever I'm able to, you know, try to correct that guy, I'm able to do that because I'm doing everything that I'm, my coaches are asking for me to do. So it's kind of giving an example of what players should be doing. But, you know, it's just something that I, I kind of just gradually learned over time. I was never – uh, you know, I wouldn't say that I was always what I am now, you know, as a, even as a young young person. Um, you know, I, I feel like just over the years of me going through high school, college, going through University of Alabama, and now to this day of two, year, two, two to three years that I'm going into now, you know, just something that just happens over time. You know, once you start to gain that confidence in yourself to be able to lead, you know, grown men who have, you know, X amount of dollars in their account and to at the same time have egos themselves, you know, once you gain that confidence, it it, it it takes you to a totally different level, too. Running out of time here, but let's see if we can run through a couple more of these. Uh, Luke? Hey, Rashawn, with the loss of the preseason, I was wondering not necessarily if your practice approach changes at all, but maybe if the intensity goes up or just sort of what your general mindset is heading into these practices, considering that they're perhaps more crucial than usual. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would just say for me, I mean, just being able to adjust to it. I mean, you know, this is something that's very rare for us, um, you know, to not have preseason games at all. But, you know, that's the thing about the NFL. You know, you have to be able to take take the things that, that you're given and be able to make the best out of it. Um, I'm actually looking forward to seeing what it's like not having any preseasons for, you know, for guys to be able to have that much more, even more time to work one-on-one -on -one with coaches and be able to have more time – to themselves to be able to get ready for the first game of the season. Um, I don't think it will change anything, to be honest with you. I think guys are going to have the same type of intensity, if not more. The simple fact that, uh, you know, the anticipation level will be at its, at its peak because you're not having those games to be able to play in that, that may be game-like. So when that first game comes through, it will be for sure um, an, an intense game. Uh, last two, uh, Eric. Hey, Rashawn, uh, just kind of following up on, on Kayla's question a couple of questions ago, um, you know, Wes, Wesley Woodyard not coming back. He's a guy that was voted a team captain, I, I think, every year since since college. Uh, and then also Logan Ryan, Jarrell Casey, guys on the defense that have been really vocal guys. Do you feel a responsibility to, to be more vocal in a leadership role just with those guys not coming back? Uh, I wouldn't say I feel responsibility. I, I would say, man, it's you know something like that is is not something that you you say that you're that you're going to have. It's something that's earned. I mean, guys around you have to be able to put you or, or put you in that position for you to even be in that type of conversation. Um, you know, it's about the respect level of guys that are around you on how they how they feel that you approach the game, how you treat others, um, you know, how you carry yourself, and all of that depends on the guys. That are that are in that locker room, and you know, regardless of how however many catches you make, or however many tackles you make, 
um, you know, that that doesn't matter. It's about, you know, the guy that's up under the helmet and guys are going to follow that type of guy. Uh, last one, Teron. Just an, an off the off the wall type of question uh, for you going through the, the the dining process, right, in, in the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. What would you say are, are the, the biggest changes, uh, the biggest different uh, things about your experience as far as getting your food, getting your, your nutrition? Excuse me. Yeah. Um, you know, everything is a little bit more. Um, it's a little bit more, you know, the way you move around in the cafeteria, you normally can just go up and get your food. Now they got glasses, they got, you know, whatever it is uh, to, you know, protect the food and all those little things and protect you as well. But, you know, it's just, it's something that is, you know, it's, it's very necessary. I feel like for us to be as clean as possible and not affect each other, there has to be certain boundaries too. So, I mean, even if that is, you know, we're, like we got now entering one way and going out the other. So little things like that, that have changed, uh, you know, uh, have, have definitely made things a little different, but you know, it is what it is, man. At the end of the day, you know, the season, season's back going, people are able to still be able to have jobs. People are able to still be able to play football. So, you know, we're just going to make the best of it.